Good morning. And good to see all of you here this morning in the Lord's house as we come together on this second Sunday in Lent. Welcome in the name of our Lord. Welcome to those watching on our Facebook page, Facebook Live. We're glad you're with us as well. Uh, today, as I said, is the second Sunday in Lent, and today we continue to hear God's word proclaimed through the prophet who calls God's people to repentance. And that's really our theme today, uh, the crisis of eternal disaster. Um, thanks be to God, our Savior has come to rescue us from that, that uh, situation, if you will. Um, and yet we're still called to repent and believe the message of the gospel, to repent of our sins and to uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, lead lives that are pleasing in God's sight. Um, that's what God desires. And so that's what the call goes out to us each and every time we gather for worship. And of course, God's word does that as, as we hear and, and read those scriptures for ourselves. So God bless us today as we hear his word proclaimed and as we take it to heart. A few announcements today. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for um, doing the welcome cards. I heard, or filling them out, I, I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago where I think we had most, mostly everyone had filled them out, which is great. So you're heeding that message. Keep on doing that. So please keep on filling out those welcome cards. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, this week, Wednesday, we have our next midweek Lenten service uh, at 6.30 p.m. I'll be preaching on the theme of, of Mary, the uh, sister to uh, Martha and Lazarus, as we see her witness Christ, to witness, uh, witnesses of the Christ, and her being that witness in a very unique and special way to show us her love for the Lord. So join us for that worship service at 6.30 on Wednesday. We had a great attendance, I heard, this last Wednesday, so let's keep that up. Meal this week is a Mexican theme, so uh, bring a dish to share, if you would, uh, with that theme in mind. That dinner begins at 5.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Also, in regards to our Lenten meals, the last Wednesday Lenten service is uh, our fish fry. So uh, we'd like to get an idea as to how uh, many people would be coming to that uh, Lenten meal on the uh, April the uh, 6th, I believe, um, is our last Wednesday midweek service. Uh, so sign up uh, at one of the sheets that are located at the entrances to the church if you are planning on coming to that uh, for the last midweek Lenten service, the fish fry. Uh, February council minutes are also available for you. If you'd like to help yourself to a copy, please do. Uh, Christian care collection takes place following our service today. Please place your donation in one of the boxes as you leave this morning. And then last but not least, uh, Amro School District has uh, spring break this week, so there are no midweek classes here at Grace on Wednesday. Uh, we'll pick up again on the 23rd. And uh, those are the announcements for uh, today. Uh, our order of service today, we're going to be using the order of matins, the order of matins. And uh, we'll be uh, singing that service in just a little bit. Our opening hymn coming up will be hymn number 725, Children of the Heavenly Father. But as we always do, we recite our memory verse of the month. Oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, verse 2. We sing our opening hymn.
Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father. O oh God, why do you cast us off forever? May the Lord direct us to the ruins of our righteousness. O oh Lord, we poor sinners cry to you and beg your mercy. We confess that we have lived as if you did not matter and as if we mattered most of all. Our Lord's name we have not honored as we should. Our worship and prayers have faltered. We have not loved God above all things and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done the good your word desires and have done the evil your word forbids. May God be merciful to us, forgive us all our sins, and strengthen our faith for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. For his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To the impenitent and unbelieving, I declare that so long as you continue in your impenitence, God will not forgive your sins and will visit your iniquity upon you. So you turn from your sinful ways, come to repentance, trust in the merits of Jesus Christ alone. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him, songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our psalmody this morning is Psalm 4, which we pray responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Under in your own hearts. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Who will show us the good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Peace I will go lie down in sleep. You alone, O Lord, fall in safety. You may be seated for our next hymn, number 586, Preach You the Word. Old Testament reading appointed for today, this the second Sunday in Lent, is from the 26th chapter of Jeremiah, reading verses 8 through 15, will also serve as our text for our sermon this day. When Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, 
You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. And the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle is from Philippians chapters 3 and 4. Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. This is the word of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of St. Luke, verses 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken. And I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. Congregation may be seated. Do you have any children this morning at late service who want to come down for a trial? Oh, we do. Oh, you're in, you're in great, you're in good luck today because I, I forgot something at early service. Oh, this is great. Come on down, sit on the floor. I'm 
going to sit on the floor down there. I'll sit on the steps. Good morning. How's it going today? Good, good. All right, awesome. So, what's going on? Yeah, one more. Come on. Good. Well, uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story uh, about a, a, a little boy uh, named uh, Pete. And um, one day Pete was playing in his, his bedroom. He loved to play in his bedroom, but his mom came up and said, uh, uh, Pete, we got to go to the store. We got to pick up a few items. We got to go to the grocery store. Well, Pete loved to go, go shopping with his mom. And you know, the reason why he liked that is because uh, every so often his mom would uh, buy him something uh, fun, like a candy or a candy bar or something like that. So he was figuring now this would be another opportunity that he might get a nice treat like that. So he goes with his mom to the store and he goes to, she gets her item, they get their items and goes to the checkout counter and, and uh, but mom didn't pick up any candy yet. And so, you know, at those count at the checkout counter, they have all those things in the shelf that you can pick from. And he says, mom, mom, I want some candy. And mom says, no, Pete, we're not going to get any candy today. But I want candy, he said. And his mom says, no, Pete, we're not getting candy today. And so Pete, who had grabbed a, a, one of the candy bars, put it back. But then when his mom wasn't looking, before they left, grabbed that candy bar again, or in this case, one of these, M&Ms, put them in his pocket. Walked out, the sto- walked out of the store with his mom, that candy in his pocket. What happened? What did, what did Pete just do? Anybody want to tell me what he just did? Yeah. He just stole something. He stole it, right? He didn't buy it. He stole it. And mom didn't know about it yet, as we'll see in the story what mom will find out. Guess what? Mom knows everything. She sees everything. She hears everything. Believe me. Those days, okay? The moms here know that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So anyway, they get home. They get home, and yes, Pete... Well, he wasn't very clever at keeping things hidden. And he got his candy out, and Mom saw that. He says, take that from the store. Yes, I did. And Mom says, Pete, do you know what commandment you just broke? Anybody know which commandment Pete broke? You know the commandments? Yes. You shall not what? Steal. It's commandment number seven. Number seven. Good job. Number seven, and said that was not good. You just that's God doesn't like that at all. And Pete realized that after he after Mom reminded him, he, he was he realized what he had done was wrong, and he was very very sorry for that. And uh, Mom said, "Well, you know what, Pete? God forgives your sin. God forgives your sin, and uh, I forgive you too, and I love you. But why would God forgive his sin?" What's the reason we can say that God forgave Pete's sin of stealing? Yes. Exactly. Jesus came and he died on the cross for our sins, right? We just sang that in this, that piece of, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that line that I sang or said before. Jesus died for our sin. And so, yes, God, Jesus does forgive our sin, and Pete was forgiven. And so, I forgive you, Pete. God forgives you. And that's the end of that, right? That's it? What do you think mom said next? Any idea? What do you think they needed to do yet before they went on with their day? Yeah, okay, great. Give it back or not do it again. That's true. We'll try not to do that ever again. But Pete, we need to go back to the store because I want to show you what true repentance is all about. It's not only being sorry for our sins and being, you know, re- regretting what we've done. That's also, and believing that we're forgiven, but it's also saying we're going, to, we're going to attempt to do better next time. And of course, take that back. And he did that. They went and confessed that sin to the manager of the store. The manager forgave him, and all was well. And now Pete was restored. The reason I tell this story, boys and girls, is because that's exactly what the prophet Jeremiah was doing. He was calling God's people to repent of their sin. 
say, you have sinned in God's sight, repent and turn from your evil way. And the good news for us is that same message comes to us, and when we trust in Jesus, when we're sorry for our sins and trust in him for forgiveness, we are forgiven too, and then we can go and serve others and be the people that God has called us to be because of who we trust, and we know that he loves us dearly. It's not easy, but God does it, and he does it for us because he loves us. So I'm going to talk more about that in my sermon today, and so listen carefully. Now, guess what? Since you came up here this morning, and because uh, anybody would like a pack of M&Ms before you go back? Now, the only thing is don't eat these until after church, okay? We'll give it, so if you want to have a piece of candy, before you go out, you go back. Let's, let's pray first before we Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love for us, that you send Jesus to be our Savior, to forgive us of our sins, and to uh, give us eternal life. We pray, Lord, that you help us to walk in your ways all of our days, but when we fall into sin, that we confess and, and come to you for forgiveness, and then uh, seek, to do, seek to do better in our lives. As you Bless uh, these uh, children, bless their families, give them the joy of knowing you as Lord and Savior, and continue to watch over them all of their days. We ask this in Jesus. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. If you want a packet of M&Ms, you can. Head back, and we'll sing our sermon hymn. You're welcome.
Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this morning for our devout consideration and meditation is the Old Testament reading from Jeremiah 26 that you heard read. And I'd like to read again to you these verses, verses 12 and 13, where Jeremiah said, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. This is our text. In the name of Jesus, the suffering servant for you and for me, my dear friend. It's definitely a, sh definitely a thing today that we know that we are living in a dangerous time. For the last few weeks, the top news story, and you have to be living in a box or in a hole somewhere to not know what is taking place in Ukraine. What's been happening there and what we've been seeing on the news of the bombings and the killings and whatnot. And because of the internet, it's very easily accessible to find out what's going on. And we've been keeping the people of that country in our prayers, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ, our fellow Christians who are in harm's way, but who are still worshiping and praising the Savior in the midst of the danger that they are facing. And at the same time, we've also been praying to the Lord that he would turn the hearts of those that would seek to hurt and harm and kill people to turn to him in repentance and faith and come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Such a thing is right and so to do because Jesus himself says to us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Nevertheless, there is a fear that things are going to get worse before they get better. And what everyone hopes for, what everyone prays for, is that a greater crisis would be averted, namely the beginning of World War III. But friends, this is not the first time that there has been this danger in the world. Many of you remember, some of you learned this in the history books, that for 13 days in October of 1962, from October 16th through 28th, a nuclear war was averted. It is remembered as the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Union was shipping nuclear missiles to Cuba only 90 miles from the U.S. coastline. Soviet ships had every intention of breaching a U.S. naval blockade and delivering their deadly cargoes. An American reconnaissance plane was shot down over Cuba, and a U.S. invasion force was ready to strike. The United States Secretary of Defense later said, I thought it was the last Saturday I would ever see. But through intense negotiations between President John F. Kennedy and Russian dictator Nikita Khrushchev, including history records, some very harsh words, and of course, by the very, very grace of God, the Soviet ships turned around. No nuclear missiles landed or launched. No World War III crisis averted. In our text for this morning, God's people are facing a crisis as well. But it's a spiritual crisis. It's a crisis that involves their survival as a nation. The Lord has sent his prophet Jeremiah to speak some very, very harsh words, words that needed to be proclaimed. And the question is, will they heed those words, repent, and will that crisis be averted? Whether we today know this as well as we should, we also are ever on the brink of a crisis, one of nuclear proportions, one that also threatens our very survival. And the question is the same as for Jeremiah's hearers in the text. Will the same word of God proclaim to us avert the crisis of our eternal disaster? Dear friends, this is why God is so faithful in giving us his word of truth, because he always desires that we continually repent of our sin and believe his word of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And so it is that we ask our Lord to work in us this attitude of repentance and faith in him so that we can always be assured of our salvation in Christ. 
There is a great danger in despising the preaching of God's word and that it creates an eternal crisis which threatens desol threatening desolation and damnation. This was the point the kingdom of Judah had reached because they were had been rejecting the word of God. And to reject the word of God, of course, is to reject the Lord himself. In the text, Jeremiah speaks exactly what the Lord told him to proclaim. In verses 4 through 6, verses preceding our text, the Lord himself tells Jeremiah, you shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me and to walk in my law that I have set before you and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. Pretty harsh words. And what really hit a nerve was that last statement. I will make this house like Shiloh. And you'd be saying, well, why would that hit a nerve? Well, you see, it goes like this. Some 450 years before, Israel had taken the Ark of the Covenant, which was the very presence of God, from its place in Shiloh into battle against the Philistines as a good luck charm. Of course, this was not pleasing to God, so he allowed the ark to be captured by the Philistines and Shiloh to be destroyed. Because of Judah's sin and stubborn impenitence, Jeremiah proclaimed that the temple and Jerusalem would be the same, desolate, slain, laid to ruin, dried up, destroyed, and taken away. At this, the religious leaders, the corrupt priests and false prophets, lay hold of him, and they accuse him and threaten to kill him. And the rest of the crowd, as the rest of the crowd rush together to get around this whole situation, the priests and the prophets demand death for this one who prophesied against the temple and the city they made their God. How dare you do that? They're saying, you deserve to die. There, before that hostile crowd and his life hanging in the balance, Jeremiah, the faithful prophet, calls them to repent and to return to the Lord, to return to the true God. For if they do, the Lord will relent in bringing the disaster upon them. Listen again to what Jeremiah tells them. He says, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But if they refuse, Jeremiah says, as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. For both Judah and Jeremiah, this is the moment of crisis, either for peaceful resolution or for catastrophe. My friends, this is what is the case today for all of us. In fact, it's been this way ever since Adam and Eve's fall into sin in the Garden of Eden. Consider the fact that you and I have not given up our own gods that we fashion for ourselves. We worship our carnal desires. We put tr our trust in things of plastic and steel. We put our trust in things like the economy and the stock market. We put our trust in sinful people instead of the Lord. We lie and cheat for temporal things that course, last only a short time. And as we descend into this journey of Lent and continue to live all the days of our lives, we know that we are in a crisis. We know the wages of sin is death. We know that we have run brought forth in iniquity. We know we have sinned and done what is evil in God's sight. The crisis is before us. We are lost. We are condemned creatures. No negotiations, no lawyers to argue our way out, no trying to do better on our part can bring about a peaceful resolution. But there is a way out of the crisis that threatens our condemnation. 
The living word made flesh, Jesus, intervenes in this crisis of nuclear proportions. Jeremiah, as we well know, like all the prophets, foreshadows the greater prophet that is to come in our Savior, Jesus Christ. As the angry mob gathers around Jeremiah, we see another angry mob surrounding our Lord and demanding his death because of all the things that the Son of God had spoken, the one that was sent from above to do all that the Father had commanded him, the one who did all things perfectly. God sent all many prophets before he sent his one and only Son, and they were all murdered. Jesus comes and he laments over their rejection because, you see, he loves them that much. Yes, he loves us that much. In the gospel, Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you were not willing. You see, he sorrows over their rejection because his desire is not to condemn, but to save. That's what he told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his one only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order for the world to be saved through him. This is the only way the crisis of our damnation could be averted. In Jesus, God lives the commandments perfectly in our place. The Bible says Jesus knew no sin. And he took upon himself the punishment that we so deserved by shedding his holy, precious blood, suffering and death on the cross, as the payment for our sins, as a payment for damnation. On the cross, Jesus gathers wayward children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. On the cross, Jesus dies desolate as the Father forsakes him in our place and claims us as his own. On the cross, Jesus gifts us with our citizenship in heaven, even as we now await his glorious return. He would do all of this, even though he knew that many would still reject him as Lord and Savior. In the verses that come immediately following our text, cooler heads prevailed. Jeremiah's life was spared, at least for now. But sadly, 22 years later, Judah was dragged off into captivity into Babylon. The temple was destroyed, and as, and as was Jerusalem itself, just as Jeremiah had warned. And why? Because the people never really had taken God's word to heart. They did not truly repent. The Apostle Paul wrote in our epistle reading for today these words. He says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Stand firm means to keep our eyes always fixed on Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. It means we cling to him throughout this desolate journey of life, whether we are in sadness or joy, whether we have much or we have little. He is the one thing needful. He is our life and salvation, and there is no salvation apart from him. And that is why, dear friends, we are called to continually listen to the Lord and his word. That when God's word convicts us of our sins, we don't deny or make excuses or blame someone else. We take those words to heart, examine ourselves, and we repent. We say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And each and every day, as Luther writes in the small catechism regarding our baptism, the old Adam, that old nature that we all have in us, by daily contrition and repentance, is drowned and dies with all sins and evil desires, and a new man daily emerges and arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. This is who we are as children for whom the crisis of damnation is averted children of faith and repentance and love toward God and our neighbor. We don't know how the crisis in Ukraine will play out. We certainly pray that a greater crisis can be averted and that peace will, yes, eventually prevail. 
No doubt history bears out many crises that have been averted and thousands of lives saved. There is no doubt, there is none like the crisis of sin and death by which Jesus' death and resurrection, and this alone, averted a crisis of such epic proportions, a crisis of your soul and mine. We often feel that crisis now, as we live in this world. The final resolution will come on that last day, when Christ will transform our lowly bodies to be like unto Christ's glorious body. Crisis averted. Thanks be to God for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may God's peace, which surpasses all human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and we sing the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. may be seated as we now honor our Lord Jesus with our tithes and offerings.
We give thee but thine own, where the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. When we come to the prayer of the church today, we have a few prayer requests this morning. First, we want to keep in prayer uh, Scott Laurent. Uh, you remember uh, the Laurent family? Uh, he is in the hospital at uh, UW Hospital in Madison on a ventilator as he is dealing with difficulty of getting oxygen on his own. So we want to keep him in our prayers as well as his family, obviously. Uh, also, we want to pray for uh, the child, Journey Bow, as she's going to be having surgery on uh, March 17th for her tonsils and adenoids uh, in preparation for her reconstruction surgery this coming summer. She'll be at the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee for this surgery. And also the family of Roy Nussbaumer, who, a member of our congregation who was called in to eternal life uh, on sun last Sunday, the 6th of March. Uh, his funeral service took place yesterday in Winnicani, and so we keep uh, the family in our prayers uh, for that as well. With that, we stand with the prayers beginning with the Kyrie. by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> Bidden by your mercy, O Lord, we come in prayer and to petition your aid for the church, the nation, the sick, and all people who have requested our prayers. O Lord, as once you warned your people to mend their ways and their deeds, and heed the voice of your word, so grant us grace that we mend our sinful ways, repent of all the things we have done wrong, and heed the voice of your word. Bring us to the obedience of faith, that we may enjoy your mercy and tender compassion. Lord, in your mercy, grant grace to your church and those who preach and teach your word, that they be faithful to your word and truth, and that your church may prosper and many be brought to faith. Lord, in your mercy, guide and prosper our nation in paths of goodness and virtue. Bless our president, governor, and all elected and appointed government officials, that we may be free to worship you in spirit and truth and live as godly citizens while on earth. Lord, in your mercy, deliver us from stubbornness of heart and willful desire that we may learn in all humility and patience and share with others the gospel of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, show your compassion to all who cry to you for mercy and who bear any afflictions of body and soul, including Scott, Laurent, and all others, Lord, who would name before you this day. Grant them healing in accordance with your will and patience until your deliverance comes. Lord, in your mercy, give us generous hearts that we, what we have received we share with those in need, and that we support the work of your kingdom with all our abilities and with the tithes and offerings we bring. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we ask you to be with little Journey as she uh, has her tonsils and adenoid surgery on the 17th of March. We ask that you bless that procedure, that it all may go well, that you continue to abide with her all of her days. Bless her parents and remind them, Lord, of your presence and comfort that you bring to them as well in this time. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious Lord, we ask you to bring comfort and peace to the family of Roy Nussbaumer, who mourned his death. Give them the comfort and assurance of the resurrection that is to come, and a happy reunion in heaven with all those who have gone before us in the one true faith. Continue, Lord, to remind each of us that we are mortal people, and that we might always prepare our hearts to fall asleep in faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear your people, O Lord, who come to you at your own invitation with the concerns of our hearts and praise of our lips, trusting that you will grant us all things needful and protect us from all things harmful to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. O Lord, O Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated for our closing hymn, number 730, What is the World to Me? Thank you. 
color. 